So now I am inside of my studio where I spend most of my time working. And I'm going to share throwing a sink. So throwing all starts with a centering. So I had had some of it centered before I started the video. But now I'm centering the rest. So how I got started in clay and ceramics. Um, ever since I was young, I always kind of had a passion for making things or crafting. I loved sewing, uh, but I really wanted to be an Egyptologist when I was growing up. So I went to college for anthropology and, you know, I loved it, but I had to choose a minor. And so I had Taking a, you had to take a fine art selective, and I took a clay class, and I just fell in love with it. So, art was my minor, and after graduating, I, you know, thought deeply about what I wanted to do, and I decided that I didn't want to spend my life, you know, writing papers and teaching college um, in anthropology, and there's just not a lot of job options for an anthropologist. In, in the real world, unfortunately, there are some corporate, you know, um, uh, opportunities for anthropologists, like HR related, but yeah, I didn't want to do that. So I continued in clay and I went and took a few more classes and then applied for grad school and I got in. And so I got my MFA in clay and there I, I didn't really throw that much. I didn't, unfortunately, have that much experience throwing before I went to grad school. And uh, the main professor there, who is awesome, also very scary and intimidating man to me, but he, he was a thrower. And, you know, I'd, I spent like one summer throwing uh, and making a series of dishes. And uh, he came in a look and said, you know, I'd I give you props for how much work you did, but you know, they're beginner stuff, toss them. So, you know, I continued on making sculpture. I made some pretty funky sculptures of like women's torsos combined with uh, um, like um, domestic objects. Sorry, I'm looking for a tool here. There's sometimes even with the um, Pug mill, there's still little bubbles that you can feel, so you gotta get those out. So if I feel bubble, I just pop it. So right now, you know, I'm still, I'm beginning to throw. I opened the vessel up, opened the sink up. And right now I'm compressing the bottom. Compression, something you hear if you watch clay videos. That's something a lot of people mention and uh, clay particles are flat, so you gotta squish them together basically to avoid cracking. So constantly going in and compressing your bottom is important. So anyway, I went to grad school, graduated, and then was out. I taught uh, college art for a little bit, but then I, you know, I wasn't really sure what I was gonna do ceramics wise, and you know, I just love having my hands in clay. I started making. Pottery, I think the reason why I chose pottery more so instead of continuing with sculpture is because of the glazes. I really love crystalline glazes. They kind of had me at hello when I first saw them. So, um, but, you know, they are very complicated visually in themselves. So making complicated sculpture and then putting a complicated glaze on it doesn't always work visually. But that's kind of my passion. Well, that is my passion too. I love making sculptures. That's kind of my personal art time. And uh, I love combining different elements, mainly natural on, you know, like ornate vessels and then adding the crystalline glazes. But anyway, so 
um, yeah, I started making pottery, uh, just like mugs and, and um, bowls, plates with, you know, crystalline glazes on. And I, I opened an Etsy shop back in, I think it was 2008 or 2009. And, you know, they weren't the greatest pieces, but I was happy. And, you know, pottery and ceramics is something that skill just, you know, it's how much you work on it. You don't have to get a degree in ceramics. You can definitely be self-taught, but it is just spending the time. Throwing itself is, is more so muscle training than anything else. You know, I guess I got kind of big muscles going on. <laughs> um... But, yeah, it's muscle training. So it's something that only experience can teach you. Uh, but then how did I get started in sync? I was running a, renovating, renovating our bathroom. And I started looking around at, like, vessel sinks and stuff like that. And I was like, well, I can make something so much cooler than what I'm seeing. At the time, there wasn't really much choice as far as vessel sinks. Um, mainly, they were just white and plain or black. And, you know, there were not very many people making handmade sinks. And um, there weren't very many being manufactured that were different. So, you know, I listed a couple on Etsy. And I was amazed that they sold. So that's kind of how it all started. And then as I kept going, um, you know, I started making different designs and started having custom orders and working with, you know, customers. And it all just kind of happened. So I was very lucky. So now I have this thing pretty much thrown. They all start out round, even my oval ones. I'll, I'll show you an oval one in a little bit, what happens with that. That's a kind of an extra step, a little extra work going on into oval ones because they start round and so I have to compress the sides and they get oval, but then the sides get uh, convex. I think it is where they're, they, you know, the sides stand up. So I have to trim the top flat in order to trim it. Right now, I'm, I'm compressing again. Here's a tool called a rib. And compress the outside. And I'm about to trim the drain hole. So use a needle tool, create the drain hole, which will get more trimming once this guy is dried for a while and for, firmed up. Then I'll turn him over and trim the underside and trim a little bit more off the exterior. Interior, I mean, trim the interior and the exterior. So right now I'm taking a little bit of excess clay off the middle. And that's basically me throwing a sink. So this guy is not too big. Um, I can make them pretty large. Most standard is about 15 inches. Um, clay shrinks as it dries and is fired. So I, I can get a pretty good estimate of the size it'll be. But I, I can't give an exact until, until it's finished. So, anyway, oh, my hands are dirty here. I uh, will show you what the inside of this looks like. Again, compression is important. 